Hi, welcome to Absolutely Fish Walk Around the Shop number two. For those of you who have seen Walk Around the Shop one, we came in the front door. We're going to come from a different angle this time and uh, let's take a walk. I'll just be your narrator through this uh, tour of our store. We're going down through the hallway here and uh, what I want to do is go toward the uh, invertebrates. Yeah, this is our coral section right here in one of these tanks, as you can see. This is mostly our high-end Australian LPS coral. I do see some soft coral in that tank as well. Uh, go to the left over here is another tank, again, uh, mostly uh, LPS coral. Uh, I see Ganapora, Divisi in there, there's Globrescence, some of the higher end stuff. And then I see some uh, Zoanthids, other coral down here of different types of leather coral. Let's take a look at some of the exhibits. Uh, some of our exhibits that we're very proud of here is uh, the first one you're seeing is a freshwater CARES tropical tributary. Can you get the, uh, get the, yeah, good. And if, for those of you that don't know, CARE stands for the Conservation Awareness and Recognition of Endangered Species. We were the first CARE store in uh, North America. Uh, thank you to our friends uh, from the CARES uh, organization. You can uh, see them by going to their website. Some of the really cool fish. Every fish that you see in this uh, tropical tributary are listed in the CARES uh, program and we are supposed to be trying to breed and keep this in the hobby not taking fish from the wild the one fish i definitely would like to pull, uh, point out is uh, this uh, Borrelius canarensis very cool where'd he go there he is love that fish we have people requesting them all the time it is a uh, cypronid from india lots of rainbow fish denisonites we're in our high-end uh, room, and uh, uh, Todd's going to scan that in just a minute, but uh, this, this is our soft fringing reef. What we wanted to do with this uh, exhibit was try to uh, build something similar that you would see as a refugium, but make it the tank. Everything in here uh, that is a, a Nadarian is soft. Uh, we have Alcyonarias in here, Coralliomorpha, Zoanthidia. There is uh, no stony coral in there, nothing that utilizes uh, calcium as a predominant macronutrient. Really cool. And most of the fish in here are smaller fish. I wanted to get some food, and maybe if I can get somebody to put some food in there. What, what we're really proud of, can you zoom in, try to get that wet morella wrasse? We actually have all three species of wet morella wrasses in there. We have Nigro pinata, Tanaki, and Albo fasciata. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Albo fasciata. Yeah, oh, look at this. There actually, there's a Halicoris. We've got the uh, black cap basslet and our proud uh, little Anthoides hog in there. But oh, there's the other wet morella. We have all three species and we keep little. Uh, fish that really feed on, like it would be a refugium, that would feed on uh, tigger pods and uh, different types of um, small crustaceans that come right off the rock. And that uh, blue macroalgae came to us from ORA. We're very proud in uh, some of the macros, and a nice, beautiful uh, reddish orange macro is in there. Another exhibit, well, you want to scan this. We actually, this is our high end room, our protein skimmers. Uh, some of our UV sterilizers over here. Uh, we have refugiums, wet dries, pumps, uh, reactors, phosphate reactors, uh, bio pellet reactors, uh, chillers are stored away. Uh, pretty much anything you could think of is back in our high end room. Uh, we're not really here to look at. I think fish are more fun to look at. I don't know what the rest of you feel. Stony coral, reef atoll. So this is another example of a reef tank that we built here. Now this has nadarians that are all stony coral scleractinians. There are SPS combined with LPS. Uh, you can see there's a Duncan in there. We also have a Tridacnia clam, again because it utilizes calcium and magnesium to build its, uh, its skeleton, or in the case of a mollusk, its shell. 
Uh, one of the interesting fish that are in here that we're doing something different with this, these will have more larger fish. Obviously our tangs or our cantharids are in there, not in the soft fringing reef because the soft fringing reef has macroalgae. And here we are not using algae. Uh, I love these blue line snappers. Okay, do you got a shot of those in there? Yes. Lajanas. Casmira, I believe is the proper name for those. And uh, we're trying to school. We had six of them in there. I wish I had food here. I forgot it. And uh, we wanted them to feed together. You could see them. And when we raise them up, we'll probably actually have them for sale. Look at that monocle bream. Ah, yeah. We had Antheus in here. Uh, there's different types of uh, tangs. I believe that's a, is that Maculicep? Maculicep. Maculicep tang and uh, McCulloch-Eye um, uh, uh, clowns, they're from Australia. Uh, of course, these are aquaculture. Most of all of our clowns are aquaculture. No need to buy wild type clowns anymore. Let's uh, cruise through the rest of the uh, corals. Uh, over here we have uh, baby shark pods. Uh, we keep a lot of creepy crawly stuff in here. Uh, we have Serianthus anemones, medusa worms. There's a big uh, green Hadoni carpet. Uh, you know, you can see brittle stars, orange medusa worm. We also, in our SPS tank, this was actually in the first video walk around the shop, but most of this, these uh, uh, rose bubble tip anemones breed here and just keep breeding and um, uh, they're asexually reproducing by budding off and we just keep pulling them out and selling them. Uh, they've been here for many years, as well as the uh, clownfish, the pair of nigrippes there. Most of the SPS coral here, Seriataporas, there is, I believe, Pasillopora, Stylopora, uh, a lot of Acropora in here. Uh, and then, of course, there's Hidnoporas, Montiporas, mostly that. Um, right here we have our $40 aquarium. This is $40 tanks. Lots of zoanthids, star polyps, um, daisy polyps, mushroom rock, Corallium morphus. Uh, what? I, uh, and let's just scan through this here real quick. These are just some of our more of our coral tanks. I'd also, can we move over to our frag system? One of our new systems is the frag tanks, and these are all uh, frags. All these frags that you see in these aquariums that we're scanning through here are all our own aquaculture that we do in our own aquaculture facility. All of the uh, zinnia that you see there, quite a bit of frags. And uh, if you're interested, go to www.absolutefish.com and you can see AF facility, that is our aquaculture facility. Click it and you can see pictures and some of the things that we are doing on that facility. I believe we're in Aquarium uh, Marine Fish and U uh, Marine Fish and Coral USA uh, 2015 edition. There's an article and uh, we have some pictures in there too. And more frags over here. Example of some of our example of some of our shrimp. Oh, look at this. You got to zoom in on that. Aquaculture Panatus bat. Yes, that was actually, that is not from the wild. That is an Aquaculture Panatus bat. We actually, at the moment here, have it eating baby brine. Why am I whispering? I don't know. Is that beautiful? He is cute. Keep going on here. This is our uh, Neo Nano tank. Again, uh, some of our uh, aquaculture, this is a lot of our aquaculture stuff. There is actually a crinoid in there. And uh, just a quick view of the pond, just a quick flash. We got some big, look how friendly they are. They love us here. They all love us at Absolutely Fish. Look at this guy, I'm petting him. It's actually, uh, isn't there a Pseudodorus and Iger in there too? Big one. Let's go over this way. Back there. 
We are, uh, oh, we got a group of employees here. Uh, and who is this? What is your name? Alex. And what is your name? Josh. What are you doing actually right now? I'm actually going over some bad cycling fish to start off the tank. Sure oh, so is that part of our training procedure? Yes, it is. Oh, I see. So uh, what we do here is uh, a lot of the, uh, the, Alex being one of our newer uh, employees on, on board, uh, we actually have him mentored with somebody experienced like Josh who is an M1 certified aquarist and Josh is actually reviewing his training manual going over some of the uh, compatibility of these freshwater fish uh, what's good cyprinids to cycle with or what's good kerosins to cycle with he and he's going to name um, and uh, when we do play uh, our our quiz games here we actually generally do not use common <laughs> names we use Latin names or Latin families and uh, it really kind of creates a better bridge between the science as well as the, uh, the the common names. I guess it goes into what we say: the art and science of fish keeping is our passion and what defines us. I want to get Cindy. Up. Let's go to uh, Marine. Oh, uh, yeah, let's go to Marine Fish Lagoon. Can you get a shot of a uh, new system? This is called Marine Fish Lagoon. What we wanted to do was, uh, and this one is not filled up with a lot of fish right at the moment, and uh, it's built in an island type uh, formation where we can also put live rock in it and keep smaller reef type uh, fish in it. Uh, eventually, we're going to build onto it where we wanted to be able to put uh, mandarins in here. In fact, I do see mandarins through there. If you look closely, you'll see them in the back. Um, we also wanted to build a little island where we can just keep our lionfish here out of our main um, marine system. We found that the lions do much better here. And again, there's baby, I think there's a baby, is there a baby cat shark in here? Baby cat shark. Yeah, they're in there somewhere. I wish they'd be cooperative. Let's go around. There's a mandarin, get a shot. We got mandarins and purple tangs in there. Mandarins and purple tangs. This system is not completed. We are not fully done with it and we are gonna build on where we're gonna have a seahorse display. And that's why we call it Marine Fish Lagoon. It is a fowler system, fish only with live rock. Over here is our main marine system. We'll just kind of scan uh, up and down a few of the aisles here. And uh, this is a this main marine system has about 38 75 gallon tanks. We're not going to, uh, because of time, go through every tank. Let's do this. Hey, let's look at this. Homa uh, homa nuka nuka a pua a. Which one is the real one? That one, or is it this one? Let's ask all of you on YouTube, do you know which the real one is? Yes. And then the sign. Hi, Heather. Hi, hey, hi. this is Heather. <laughs> Heather is, uh, what are you doing? I'm taking care of marine fish. You're doing marine fish, and are you doing a husbandry list? I am. Okay, awesome. so that's what we do here every day. We do a marine husbandry list to just make sure that the fish are cared for properly and getting the proper nutrition. Uh, thank you, Heather. You, you may move on. Okay. And uh, we uh, will go ahead and um, we do daily baths or pull fish into the back that need to be um, cared for. Uh, we're just going to scan down through here. Unless we see anything interesting we'd like to talk about. But just to give the folks out there on YouTube uh, an idea of some of the uh, fish. There is a uh, persona for angel. Actually, it's not a true persona for, is it? That's, no. I don't like the way that coral's sitting. We have bridges. We've got uh, aquaculture to Cesar, uh, pseudos. <clears throat> we have flame angels that just came in. They're under quarantine. Uh, we will have them separated probably in a day or two. That's really to make sure that they uh, settle in. Oh, there's a Septrianalis angel. Butterflies, scribble angel, 
again, Royal Gramas, new. We have to wait till they settle in, then we'll separate the Royal Gramas. For those who don't know that, you really should not have more than one Royal Grama in a tank. Gramas do fight, and they will fight with conspecifics or other types of the same genus. Black Tang, is a little baby Black Tang in there. Ooh, nice Black Tang. That's a sharp looking fish. And we'll scan up and down. Okay, how about we just do a couple more here and we gotta move on because uh, I wanna do a little bit of fresh water. And, uh, again, we have um, uh, uh, Chevron Tangs. Okay, so that's some of the marine fish. There's quite a bit more marine fish to pick here at Absolutely Fish. We are known for having one of the better selections in actually the United States in a retail, local retail shop. Let's look at some of the fresh water back here. Hi. What's the question? Touch. All right, we're gonna stream down here through the uh, fish. We didn't wanna, yep, we're trying to get Oh, look, we have another person over here. Oh, this is, uh, oh, who are you? My name's Cindy. And what are you doing now, Cindy? I'm feeding our African cichlids. Oh, and uh, is that part of, uh, but I mean, what are you doing, the freshwater husbandry? Mm -hmm. I'm doing the freshwater husbandry husbandry. Okay, and that's part of uh, what we do as far as checking out the, and making sure the fish are getting the nutritional needs, mm -hmm. uh, if there's any type of medications. Uh, if we have uh, sick fish, could you show them a sticker of what we do with the sick fish? There's one on the tank right around to the corner where we keep them. Yeah, we keep I don't know, yeah. Can you just bring one out so we could take a look at that? Yeah. What are customers? When fish are sick here, one of the things we do is we actually put these on the tank. Uh, so that's part of what Cindy does here on mm -hmm. a daily basis. She sees a tank, the fish had uh, you know dead fish in it in the morning, or she sees they don't look right to her. She'll put that sticker up there, it'll be notated. We document everything here and mm -hmm. record every fish that die. And what Cindy does is we'll check the husbandry and the husbandry manual, and then we'll um, wait until we hopefully get them better, and then we pull the sticker off. That prevents uh, us from selling bad fish, as well as you'll know not to buy fish out of that aquarium. I definitely want to get in on the, um, are we talking now? Oh, we're on? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know we're on screen. Uh, I definitely want to get the our Bellana socks. Where's our baby Bellani? Ooh, they're right there. Okay, we're extremely proud of this. These are baby Bellana socks. That is right. The top uh, thin perch pike, I believe. They are from Mexico. Yes, they were bred by us at our aquaculture facility. Are those cutie patooties or what? Awesome. If you want to know what they look like when they're larger, we actually have a pair that are here uh, that are larger. These are some of our African cichlids. Most of what you're seeing in these back smaller tanks are from uh, Lake Tanganyika. Uh, there are Malawis in here, small Malawis, but most of this stuff is uh, your different types of Gobi cichlids. Uh, the um, uh, Cyprochromus. Eric Modus, Lamprologus, Neo Lamprologus. There are some Lake Victorians back here. I thought I saw BC 10s. Uh, obviously, uh, that's a Victorian Frontosis. Uh, we do have some specialized, smaller Malawi. Uh, obviously, I see Demason eyes over here. That is a Mabuna from uh, Lake Malawi. But uh, generally speaking, what you see mostly in these 10 gallon aquariums are smaller. Victorian. Over here is where you'll find larger Malawi. Uh, obviously your large Mabunas, small Mabunas down here, and of course now we see the peacocks. You want to go across the bridge with the peacocks, Todd? Take a look at some of these peacocks. Look at the colors on them. As you know, most African cichlids, they get these extraordinary colors from the um, copepods that they eat in the wild combined with the algae. The rocks in uh, Lake Malawi and Lake Tanganyika look similar to this. Go up and look. 
and that's what you see in a rock. The only difference is that they're growing quite a bit of algae, and living in that algae are the copepods. When you eat, when these fish eat that algae with all of the uh, chromatophores in the algae combined with astaxanthin produced by the copepods, that's what makes all these yellow, oranges, and blue colors pop out of these fish. Moving down, we're going to our central, our New World cichlids. Uh, these are uh, predominantly all of uh, Central American and South American. The only African cichlids you'll see in here are West African. You might find jewels, uh, tilapias, buttercofres in here, but really you'll see not a lot of that. Most of this stuff is New World cichlids with a pH of 7.0 and uh, a moderate general hardness. Our African rift lake system is actually kept with a higher pH and a higher hardness. Okay, let's move down to the plants. We've got plants, lots of plants. In the planted tanks, uh, you'll see there's uh, different oddball fish. Uh, there's actually ghost knives in there. Uh, we have elephant nose in there. And we'll just take a quick shot of the, some of the other plants. If you remember on the first YouTube videos, Toxicotis butthai were up there. I don't even know if we have any more left. They're all gone. And a shot down there. Let's do, uh, let's go down to the first row uh, over here. All right. So uh, the last thing I'd like to do is let's check out the back room, the filtration room. See if anybody's back there and see if we got anything going on. Oh, I see our drip lines there. That's our commercial RO water. Oh, there's mm -hmm. somebody right back here. And uh, hi, who are you? Hi, I'm Kristen. I'm one of the M1 certified operators here. And uh, what are you doing right now, Kristen? I'm opening up a new order of marine fish and screening. Oh, so uh, I see that's the acclimating troughs. And part of the screening process mm -hmm. is that we open up the fish make sure that they have arrived safely are you checking for any type of uh, abnormalities or uh, non-conforming fish yeah. and uh, huh and uh, the the suppliers that we receive fish from uh, uh, can you say something what do we do do we actually do an evaluation report we do we test the water that we get from them Oh, and so every uh, shipment here is evaluated and thus uh, sent off. We take the evaluation report and fax that to every supplier. At the end of every quarter, each supplier is then graded and uh, we evaluate any non conforming fish we get from them. So they actually get, all of our suppliers actually get a report card from us in a sense. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Kristen. We'll let you go. And I think that just about wraps up our tour of the shop. And then we'll go into the second row, okay? Sound good? Some of the freshwater tanks up and down, we'll just go up and down. Wow, look at that pelvic chromis. That's a pelvic chromis. Wow. Oh, that's hot. Yes. That is nice. What is that? Wow. Joel cichlids. These are ours. These are all our Joel cichlids. These actually came from our aquaculture facility. We're breeding these. They are aggressive, please. They're not real good community fish. There's our crebensis. Those are actually our pelvic chromis pulchers. Those are, again, from our aquaculture facility. We have bred those ourselves. You can always tell what we bred. It will say AF aquaculture next to the fish. If a fish is a cares fish, show here. Here's that pelvic chromis. It will have cares marked next to the fish. Red Bay Snooks, the big uh, predatory cichlid from Central America. Uh, not aggressive fish. That's why you don't see them over in the New World cichlid. Less aggressive. Something new we've done is our stingray tank. You maybe get a shot of the stingrays in there. Oh, here's somebody coming over here. What's your name? 
I'm Brandon. Hey, oh, hey Brandon. What are you doing right here today? I'm the ESC Associate, which stands for uh, Enjoyable Shopping Experience. Oh, so your job, you're ESC, and so you're supposed to do what? What are you, what are you supposed well, to do? I'm supposed to convenience the customers. you got to make the store look presentable somewhat and make sure all the customers are being attended to. So you just kind of roam the store, making sure that if anybody isn't yeah, sure being no, addressed... Yeah, making sure ignored, everyone's getting attended. To oh, place. excellent. I like that because we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we do a lot of work here and a lot mm -hmm. of husbandry work. And sometimes we get into our work and we don't pay attention. So we're trying to have somebody like Brandon here who does a phenomenal job, just kind of keeping his eyes out there to make sure that we are addressing your needs. And I hope we continue to do a good job. Yep. Carry on, Brandon. Thank you. Uh, over here on the marine side, something I forgot to show. Can we go, Todd, go down another aisle over here. Uh, let's pick another out. Oh, right here. Hey, I wanted to point this out. Something in our shop right here is that we do mark uh, aquacultured when the fishes are aquacultured or if they are a chic fish, which is um, sustainably harvested for the environmentally conscious, or if we have captive reared. Do we have anything captive reared here? If they're captive reared, we will mark them captive. So that way you as a consumer, you can identify what fish you'd like to buy if you want to be sustainable and only buy aquaculture or captive reared fish. We actually have a brochure on that uh, here in the shop that you can actually pick up the brochure and read it. Let's go down this aisle over here. Uh, again, another shot, the Stingray tank. These are just different shots of some of the fish that we have, some of the fresh, oh look at those ruby barbs. Now you can easily see the ruby barbs, you have some male and females in there. The males of course have the darker color body with the cherry red nose and the females are very uh, tiger barbish looking. How do you like that word, tiger barbish looking? Ah, there we go, Borrelius canarensis there for sale. Um, Big, uh, of course, there's some big uh, clown loaches there. I see the size of those babies. Wow. Those are big clown loaches. And uh, zebra danios. I wanted to show over here, uh, Todd, if you could go over here and we could take a look. Uh, we'll just scan through here. Um, I wanted to show something like the bog tank. Uh, we usually will have mud skippers in here. I'm not sure. Are there any mud skippers in stock here? I uh, can't tell if I have them right now. We may not have them today, but we do get mud skippers. Uh, we also have a uh, festival bond reel. Show this cardinal, man. Look at these cardinal textures. I saw those earlier and I was like, wow. Yikes almighty. I want them for my tank. And also, what were those thread fins up there? Looks like they're mixed in with some thread fin rainbows. And uh, let's just uh, look at the uh, adult balana socks and that's maybe where we'll end this. Let's go down here. What else? Um, angels. Yeah. Let's go up and look at this adult balana socks. This is uh, the adult balana socks that we have. Uh, these are not the parents to the babies that you saw a little bit ago. These are actually, though, I just wanted uh, you folks that don't know on YouTube to see what uh, adult balana socks look like. As you can see there, your, there's your male has gone to podium. The female has a regular ventral fin, very similar to all of your other live bears or your other postillids like uh, swordtails, mollies, platies, guppies, and then there's live bears. Their difference is that they are predatory and they do have these uh, very sharp teeth that look like a miniature gar, but they only get uh, approximately six to eight inches. Like all live bears, they like hard water. That is a regular uh, archer. That is not the Toxicotis. Well, we hope you enjoyed a walk around the shop too. Uh, maybe we'll do a walk around the shop three. Please uh, give us your comments or thoughts on this. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. 
and uh, if it's a, as much of a response as the first one, we'd love to do a third one for you. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon.